Hello again, everyone. My name is Rachel Klein, and I work for USDA NRCS as a Natural Resource Specialist. Uh, and today, again, I will be speaking on behalf of the Eastern Ohio Grazing Council. This is a second video of a two-part uh, video series on drought water management. And today I'm going to be talking about making the most out of short livestock water supply through water source and trough rotation. This water source rotation is based on the concept that our water sources during the day are not able to keep up uh, with our livestock needs as they're constantly taking and drinking from the source. However, at night when the livestock may not be drinking, it gives time for those sources to catch up uh, and specifically to fill up some of our stock tanks, which I will begin to explain farther on. I wanted to give here an example of what a spring development like look like from the beginning um, out in the field. Here we have a seep coming out of a hillside. And as the seep presents itself coming out into our pasture field, creating a wet spot, um, we can put some perforated pipe and some gravel into the ground here, collect this excess water that is running off and send it into a stock tank with the proper holding capacity for whatever livestock may be drinking out of it at one time. With that spring consistently running, um, the stock tank is going to fill until it holds its full volume capacity, at which point that water is going to run down through this overflow here in the middle and be sent out of the pipe down into a water source, a stream of some sort. Um, and in an additional video that we had made with the Grazing Council, um, we discussed how you could potentially collect this overflow water and recycle it back into your um, watering system as during this drought, we don't want to see any water wasted at all. So we're going to take the idea that a stock tank trough can hold several hundred gallons of water at a time and being as new livestock is drinking from it, all of the tanks, the troughs on that one water source are going to be full. As you move on to one of those troughs in this time of drought, your livestock are going to drink its full needs during the day and drain that trough. However, you can move on to the next trough on that same source and you already have several hundred of gallon stocked up in that tank. And we're going to move throughout the system, allowing the tanks that we've drained to fill up during its rest period and during the, the times of the night when those livestock aren't taking in their needs. The first example I'm going to use, we're going to move down to the southwest portion of the farm where our main source is a spring that is filling up a 600 gallon stock tank trough here at the bottom of the hill that is then going to pump up to another 600 gallon trough on top of the hill, which is then gonna gravity feed down to another 600 gallon trough at the bottom of the hill. So let's say we don't have any livestock in this paddock at all. They're across the road on the north side. So all three of these troughs have not been drained from, they are all completely full. We're gonna, on day one, move our livestock across into this field and isolate them to one paddock on this trough. They have 600 gallons of water capacity right now, and they're gonna drink all of that in one day. On day two, we're gonna move up to this trough. This trough is untouched and has not been drank from, therefore it is full. It has 600 gallons of, of water holding capacity. As they're drinking this trough down, this first trough that's at the source, which is the first to fill off the spring, now has the ability to fill up because nothing is drinking from it. On day three, as we drink this trough down, we're going to move to the third trough. Now they have another 600 gallons that will supply their daily need. As the first trough they were at should be about full now and overflowing to fill up our second trough that we were just at. So on day three, we're getting ready to move. And under good circumstances, we can move straight back to our first day rotation, which is already full again. However, 
if the drought is so severe, we can always continue our rotation to the next closest source on the farm. So we'll move our cattle east onto our next spring, where this spring is going to actually go into a cistern. Um, and the overflow from the cistern is what's actually gonna fill up this bottom trough. And that cistern is gonna pump its water supply on top of the hill, which is then gonna gravity feed to another holding tank at the bottom of the hill. So in this situation, you could first come down and move the cows over. We are just on the west side. We're gonna move them over to the east side. Day four, they're gonna drink their 600 gallons out of this trough. Day five, we're gonna move them up on top of the hill drink their 600 gallons on this trough. Day six, move down the hill, drink their 600 gallons on this trough. And as I said before, depending on how well that spring is pumping, um, you could then rotate again just through that one water system. Or if things are still really bad, move back across west to our first water source, which after three days should have all three of those holding tanks fully stopped again. So in conclusion of today's presentation, I just wanna remind everybody that um, these concepts are based on emergency drought situations. Um, it's not something we would typically wanna use um, in our regular management strategies. But during this time of drought, when our water isn't meeting our livestock demands. Um, the idea is that we're trying to drink out of our stored supply in our water troughs um, while rotationally moving on to the next water trough, allowing the first to fill, while at the same time utilizing multiple sources if necessary. And the speed of our rotation is going to meet um, that water flow. The greater our water flow, um, the less rotation will be needed. And that's why we wouldn't want to use this during a normal year um, because we don't want that much traffic on our pastures and we don't want our animals having to walk so much just for the sake of getting water. But in these abnormal situations where our water supply is so low, we have to do whatever we can to meet the needs of our livestock. The biggest point of this exercise that we went through today is just to try to get the wheels turning and thinking outside the box, how can we utilize what little bit that we do have on our property?